Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bitter Rivals podcast, powered by 91N. I am host Avery Roush, along with co-host Gitano Gallo. Uh, we are now a couple weeks into the regular season, about a week and a half-ish. Is that... Uh, about that, 10 days. Uh, 10 days? Okay. Yeah, it's it's been uh it's been in Toronto anyway. It's been a really up and down first week and a half. <laughs> two wins, two <laughs> losses, and then, a, and then a win last night in, in comeback fashion. There's been some things that need to be cleaned up. Um, sh- shall I go there? Shall we just go jump right into the Leafs and then we'll go yeah, halves? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let, let, let's go Leafs. So sorry. So even through the first two games, which were both wins, one against um. One against Montreal, and then I, it was Detroit that we played, I believe. Is that correct? I forget. I don't even remember. I want to we, Detroit. Or no, it was Minnesota. See? I'm totally, totally out of it. It was Montreal, Minnesota, then Chicago, uh, then we lost to Florida, and then we beat Tampa last night. So, yes. Even through the first two wins, though, against Montreal and and uh, Minnesota, talked about it a little bit last week, how we kind of wanted to let them get a little bit more game time in before we started criticizing their defense like their team defense and and we we now have a few extra games and the team defense still sucks um <laughs> like just every all around it's it's not great Ilya Samsonov is has not been good at all unfortunately and uh I don't think not that we expected him to come out and be like Patrick Waugh Carey Price levels of good but we came out and expected him to to be at least what he was last year and he he really hasn't been uh, the bright side, though, Joseph Wall has looked good in, in terms of goaltending. But yeah, it's it, they seem to be able to outscore their problems for the through the first two games against Montreal and Minnesota, and then for whatever reason they were stymied. the The offense was stymied up against uh, Chicago to start, and then same thing against Florida. They just they couldn't really get anything going, and they couldn't put two passes together. It just they, it didn't seem like there was much structure to their game, and even until. Halfway through the third period last night, same thing. It just, they were better last night for sure. And, and that Tampa goalie played well, you got to give it to him. But they just weren't able to create to create too much offense, too many high power scoring opportunities like they normally can. After that Nylander goal in the first period last night, that's that's kind of just what happened to the rest of the team is they couldn't really come up with that offense that they needed at that time. Did, uh, did Keith throw the lines in the blender yet or what? Oh yeah, he's thrown the lines all over the blender. Like, Nyes was up in the top uh, top six last night, but then he got taken out of the top six and scored two goals. Like he was, you know what I mean? Like he was playing with Nylander and Tavares to start the game. Yeah. He ended up playing on a line with Camp and Domi and, and scored two goals, both assisted by Domi. And that guy needed a game because he has had a tough start as a member of the Toronto Maple Leaf, Max Domi. So for him to have have a couple of assists last night on the on the... 3-2 and game time goal to make it 3-3 and send it to overtime, I think was huge for him and his confidence. And, and that was fa- fantastic playing by Matthew Nice, man. Both of them, actually. Domi had a few, like a couple of sick passes there that he made, a couple of great plays. And, and Nice, nice finished. And, and thank God, because uh, it wasn't looking good last night. Like, Samsonov allowed three goals on four shots. Like, that just can't happen in the National Hockey <laughs> man. You know what I mean? Like That's, yeah. And there were they were good opportunities. Like it's not like they were weak goals per se, but you just it's the National Hockey League. Three goals on on four shots is not going to cut it, no matter what kind of shots they are. You you want a, a save on you know like a big save, a good save, like a save that's you know takes an above average goalie to make. But just it was it was it was not great. The comeback was nice though, and I didn't get confirmation, but. Most of, I think Tavares ended up with that goal uh, in overtime. It looked like it. It looked like Nylander at first. Like it depends on it, how fast you watch the video, really, to see if uh, if Tavares tipped it. But I think if you slow it down, you can see that he he makes contact with it with his stick. On the broadcast, they said that it was Nylander's goal. But anyway, it's not important. What's uh, important? Yeah, I'm looking. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the Leafs account tweeted it's a Tavares goal, so I'm gonna we're gonna take it as a Tavares goal. Tavares goal, so that's huge. Uh, John Tavares, the guy who people have been demoting to third line left wing for the past three years, now has nine points through five games, two goals, seven assists. He's been fantastic. 
And I'm not it's sure. It's almost like he's good. <laughs> it's almost like he's good. And it's, it, you know, a lot of people, it, it, let's be honest, the, the, the narrative around him is he's been declining, right? And the narrative since he signed that contract is the back half of the contract isn't going to look too great. And we're at the back half of the contract. There's two years left on it, including this one. And he's got nine points through five games. I think that's that's living up to that kind of deal, is it not? I would think so. And, like, the thing is, like, declining is, like, it's like maybe still accurate because he was like a hundred point guy. He's probably not that guy anymore. So like he technically is declining, but like he's still probably a point of game player. He's a point of game player and he's getting second, second line center minutes. Like, yeah. yes, he's on the first power play, but he's not the number one guy on this team either. That's something that has to be taken in a, into an account when you look at his decline. And yeah. the first game against Montreal, I will admit, we watched it together. He looked slow as hell. Since then, you can tell that what he said is true in the offseason, and, and that's that he has a new skating coach, and, and he's completely reinvented the way he skates. And he looks great. Like, he's a little... I also, I also think, like, a lot of guys just look shit in the first game of the season because it's the first game of the season. Like... <laughs> exactly. He just... I think he's looked great. Even uh, if you put the points aside, just what... He looks better out there. He looks more more noticeable than he's been in at least a year. Like last year, I'm not saying he wasn't noticeable out there, but he definitely is a lot more involved, it seems, in the play this year. And that's fantastic to see for a guy who's who's in the second last year of a long contract that we signed him to. So, yeah, it's uh, Matthews didn't score last night, but he's still got six goals through five games uh, on pace for just over a goal a game if you do the quick maths and um, yeah, it's winning last night was important for the psyche of Leaf fans, because if we lost last night, which it really did look like we were going to, uh, I think we would all be hitting the panic button similar to the way they're hitting the panic button in Edmonton right now. Oh, Oh, like they are like, they broke the the panic button. Like they are, they've been hammering on it. Yeah. And like that's rightfully so. (laughs) Yeah, so let's go over kind of their start here. McDavid hasn't really put up the points that you would expect him to through their first, what is it, five games of the season now, or have they only played four? I'm pulling them up right now. But yeah, and he's also now hurt, right? I don't know. I don't think we have confirmation yeah. on uh, like a timeline or anything, but he's definitely he's not at 100%. Yeah. Yes, 100 That's ex- that's what we can confirm is that he is not at 100%. That's about all we can confirm. So they are 1-3-1 one, and one through five games. Okay, so not good. Not great. Three points. They're last in their division. Um, they're not even last in their division. They're fifth. They're literally sitting fifth right now. We also have to remember that the Ducks and Sharks are also in this division. And the Kraken and are 1-4-1. One, and one. Want to know what I'm kind of realizing right now? That division's terrible, and even if Edmonton no. sucks, they'll probably Dude, still make the playoffs. I saw a screenshot of the bottom of the league this morning, and I thought it was that division, but it's the bottom of the league. Ah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I saw a screenshot, and I thought it was the Pacific division, but I think it's just the bottom of the league. Yes, no, it, it 100%, that is, yes, because the Capitals are 28th, yes. So yes, the bottom four teams in the league are all from that division. As That's hilarious. Sense. That's hilarious. That I yeah. wow, I got I got I got duped. <laughs> well, I mean, like you got duped, but also right. <laughs> like That's hilarious. They're terrible. Oh my god. But they, anyway. They are really bad. Anyway, yeah, the panic button. We don't know the what's going on with McDavid. You'd hope that it's not long term. Like, just the sheer fact that he's fun to watch play hockey. But, man, it's ugly over there. They, there. You want to talk about team defense and goaltending like I was complaining about. They, wow, do they lack it. It's unreal. And, and Sue Greyhound, Darnell Nurse, like, his contract looks awful right now because he straight up is getting burned by everybody. I mean, let's be real, that contract hasn't looked good like, for the most part. Like, there's been very few points in that contract that it's looked good. Yeah, he's at 9.5. So, yeah. He's 
he doesn't look like a nine and a half million dollar player right now. I think we can agree on that. Um, yeah, he at home was a big part of that defense in the first two games. They didn't have him and, and they've had him since. And when he's on the ice, he does his job. But man, the rest of that decor is not very good defensively. Like, at like he, all. I can, Matthias Ackholm cannot play 60 minutes for them. No, like, <laughs> holy lightning. They're bad. Like, they're really, really not good. And now, now with a guy like McDavid out, it's going to be a lot more difficult to, to outscore those types of issues. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I was thinking, like, after last week, we were talking about the Hellebuck extension. Like, I'm surprised the Oilers didn't push hard for him over the summer. When there was those rumors of him wanting out, that wasn't going to sign an extension, you know, potentially walking next summer as a free agent. Like, I'm surprised the Oilers didn't get involved there and try yeah, and acquire him because that would have been that would have been game changing for them a legitimate 1a like that yeah, would have but been dude, huge. how are they gonna pay a guy like him when they got when they have darnell nurse on the books for nine and a half mcdavid's the second highest paid player in the league they have to sign uh dry to an extension at some point soon here um who's that other defenseman uh bouchard he's gonna want a contract soon like they they got Ekholm on the books. They have Jack Campbell on the books uh, already, just as goaltenders. How would they afford to 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 have a guy like Connor Hellebuck? Oh, I'm, not, fit I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I didn't. I didn't analyze this specifically how to make it happen. But like, you'd think though, if a one A like that was kind of not on the market, but like on the verge of being on the market, like you'd think you'd like do some due diligence and like try and get something involved there. Yeah, it's just like, tough. It, oh, yeah. the, the hard salary cap makes everything tough. It, it's no trade is easy, unfortunately. So, yeah. Anyway, would you like to get into some Montreal? Because we kind of drifted off into into Edmonton slander there, which is well deserved. The Edmonton slander, Ab- it's absolutely Leafs well deserved. Ha- this is the Leafs <laughs> and Habs podcast. So let's get into some Montreal talk. Yeah, and like I'm gonna sound like a broken fucking record, Dave, and it's more annoying for me than it is for you and our listeners i guarantee that but the Habs having your issues again uh kirby doc is done for the year uh blew out his acl or mcl they haven't confirmed yet but uh, yeah he is he is done for the season which is a huge blow like just he was that first game against the leafs man he was great he was so good and like like, all I've wanted is for them to stay healthy. I knew they weren't going to be good this year. I was fine with that. That was totally okay. But, like, this was a year of, like, okay, let, let, let's grow. Let's all, like, take these steps up. And he can't take these steps if he's on fucking one leg. And I'm pissed. Uh, and the other thing is it kind of ruins our top six. Because uh, so Marty talked about it in preseason. Um, that last season we saw Kirby Doc playing on the right-hand side with Caulfield and Suzuki. And he was like, we know that works. He's like, I know in, in, a, in a pinch, I can put Kirby Doc there, and he's, he's fine. He's going to work great. But they were trying him out at 2C to see if he was maybe that guy. And through a game and a half, he kind of looked like he might have been that guy. He was phenomenal against Toronto and had a really good start in the second game against the Blackhawks. And you're like, oh, you know, if, if Kirby Doc's your 2C, then like, okay, now we just need to get wingers, which is way easier to acquire in the league. Just always has been, always will be. Um, but now we don't get to see that trial year. We got fucking four periods of it. Um, so that's is a, a huge, huge, huge blow for the Habs. Um, and then Keenan Gooley is out. Uh, they haven't confirmed this one either. But it's, uh, Some people have been saying day-to-day, some people saying week-to-week for an upper body injury. Again, it's just like, we just can't catch fucking breaks. But yeah, it's just, it's not great. Um, but in terms of games, the Habs got absolutely slapped by Minnesota. They, their special teams just fucking destroyed us. They had the two power play goals and two shorthand goals that game. It was just never... And it was also like, Mark, yeah, every time Mark andre Fleury plays in Montreal, he just turns into, like, the greatest goalie of all time. And he was just phenomenal that game. They fucking beat us badly. The power play looked like shit. Uh, their two shorthanded goals came within 25 seconds of each other, which is just, like, <laughs> just not great. Um, but we did beat the Capitals last night. Cole Caulfield scored an OT winner. And, like, so you might get a little angry when I say this. But Cole Caulfield has that that thing where when he picks up the puck all the time, you're like, oh, like he, he might do something here. But sometimes when he like the puck hits his stick, you're just like, oh, he's about to score. Doesn't matter where he is on the ice, you're like, oh, like he I can feel it. Like I know like Matthews has that same thing. 
You know what I mean? Or sometimes he picks up the puck and you're, and you're just like, oh, like he's like, this isn't, this isn't like a chance here. This is like, he's putting it in the net. Like Cole Caulfield's got that thing. And it's fucking incredible. So as soon as he picked up that puck in overtime, I'm like, oh, it's over. He's walking, he's ripping this top cheddar. And he did. And it was fantastic. And I'm not saying he's going to be, you know what I mean when I, when I say it like that, right? Like I'm not comparing them, but they both have that, that factor to them. Where sometimes it's, they pick up the puck and you're like, oh, like this is in the net. Doesn't matter. It's yeah, I, I do know what you're saying, actually. I, I yeah. understand. And, and there's also a lot of that in a guy like William Nylander, where sometimes he can he can kind of bring that same energy where when he picks up the puck, especially if it's like after he misses a glorious opportunity, like like chips it wide or or tips one wide that he feels like he should have scored on. He he gets this head of steam and he kind of turns into just this monster that's not going to stop until he does score. And I think that's yeah. kind of what you're talking about right now. Yeah, exactly that. Where it's, he's, he gets the puck and it's like there's no other outcome here than a goal. Like it just, you could put the best players, fucking put like six or seven more guys in there. It's like it doesn't matter. Like he's putting the puck in the fucking net. Yeah, it's just that it's that determination after, and it comes a lot of the time, like I said, after something like, uh, like a missed opportunity. Yeah, and even the Caulfield goal. I don't know if you've seen the full clip, but he was literally like skating to the bench for a line change in overtime. And as soon as like Suzuki picked up the puck, he fucking turned, puts a stick down, picks up the pass, and then he rips a top chatter. It was fucking yeah. Like see, so it had not a great ship that overtime. Had a couple yeah. chances, missed wide, and then you know, gets that one last chance and he just fucking buries it. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if you want to talk about overtime too, like. The Leafs overtime strategy this this year has been a lot of just prey, like just <laughs> offensive prey. But last night, I'm not kidding. I think it was about it was roughly a two, maybe maybe two and a half minute overtime. I don't remember Tampa touching the puck. Like I actually don't remember. It. And for whatever reason, like it, it takes a lot of things, including like bounces going your way. But even when they take a shot on net, every time it ended every time it ended back on a leaf stick. Like I don't know how that can happen repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. Like, it's not like basketball where you just have to be taller than the other guy and you get the rebound, right? Like, that takes a lot of, of, of luck. Like, where does the puck deflect to? Where are you at the time of the deflection? Like, you know what I mean? And also, it also takes, like, good team defense, which we've established the Leafs haven't really had this year either. So, like... Yeah, but in, in Tampa, if anybody you would think would be able to to kind of take advantage of that like guys like Kucherov which they did in the first period last night Kucherov was unbelievable like I he, he looked like the best player in the world at that point in time and you can see why he had that MVP season like he is really truly one of the best players in the world that guy and he, he not he's yeah, not under that, that it, apple is disgusting in the first the slap pass apple oh he yeah he well he had three <laughs> points on their first three on on three goals on four shots and and they yeah. were all created by him they were all opportunities that he created whether they were for himself or for other guys right like you're t- is that are you talking about the apple where he like kind of the puck was like kind of came in a little behind him and he like yeah, faked he, the stuff and then he like just pa- passed to the guy going to the net yeah and buddy uh, poked a five hole as Samson was sliding oh yeah yeah oh, it, 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 yeah <laughs> and that's it, it he had me feeling like we were about to lose a third game in a row, and it was not a good feeling. Like, it was not a good feeling. Thank God for Matthew Nyes and Max Domi. Never thought I'd say that. Because Domi... Yeah, Matthew Nyes, maybe. Nyes, maybe. But Ma- Max Domi, man, he he struggled for through the first four games of the season. He needed that last night more than anybody on that team could have used having a couple of points there in the third period. He needed yeah. that more than anybody. And and Keith after the game was so critical of Wool. Like I or uh, not Wool, Samsonov and, and complimentary of Wool. Like that's that's crazy. Like he just straight up said you can't allow three goals on four shots. No, but here, like, there's not there's, there's nothing crazy about saying that though. Like no, it's that's, it, <laughs> that's but the just reality. How, how matter of fact he said to like is Wool starting the next game? Yes, Wool is starting the next game. Is he going to have a chance at the starter's opportunity? And like, kind of like sm- smirky laughs and says, "Yeah, yes, he is going to have a, a chance at the starter's net." Like, well, I mean, like, look, if if Samsung's playing that poorly, 
wool comes and in and, and, ter- and plays well, then like, yeah, like, yeah, there's going to be a shot there. Like, you know, that doesn't mean Samsonov's fucking like in the doghouse forever now either. It's like, you know, give wool a yeah. chance. And if, well, maybe well, what do the Leafs have like coming up? They have like a, an easy game. Give it to Samsonov and see if he can fucking, you know, turn it around. Here, let me check. Uh, yeah, no, it, I, I don't know. I'm beginning to think that that Martin Jones signing was was a good one. And the fact that he cleared waivers is going to become more important than anybody originally thought it was. Oh, yeah, that's what we play uh, six o'clock on Tuesday. And if you have you looked into what's happening on Tuesday? No, all of the games are starting 15 minutes apart. And okay. Uh, ESPN is doing like a red zone style, like hockey broadcast with all of them. Interesting. I like yeah. that. I don't know if we're going to be able to view it in Canada. I have TSN plus. So I'm hoping it might be somewhere on there. Cause a lot of things that are on ESPN plus end up on TSN plus. So I'm hoping yeah. that I, can, uh, that I can view them there, but I, I'm looking forward to that. It starts with the Leafs and Capitals at 6 PM though. Yeah. Cause the Habs play 7:15. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, they're all look at the so I'll go NHL. It's on Tuesday. Okay, let me pull this up here. So, the NHL schedule there are a couple of games today Flames, Red Wings, Bruins, Docks. Tomorrow, the Canadians and Sabres play, and then every team plays on Tuesday. There's six. Holy games. fucking shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess I know what I'm doing with my Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah, 6, 6.30, 6.45, 7, 7.15, 7.30, 45. And there, there's going to be like a simulcast, like red zone style simulcast that ESPN Plus is doing. I saw John Bucci-Gross tweeting about it this morning. <laughs> That's not. I, I also love looking at like the top of the schedule. It's like Sunday, two games. Monday, one game. Tuesday, 16 games. Wednesday, one game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like six games on a Tuesday. And it, yeah, it kicks off with the Leafs and it ends. The final game starts at 11, 11. p.m. It is Flyers and Vegas. Of course, it's in Vegas. The last yeah. game of the, of, of the night yeah, is in Vegas. Can, can we talk about the fucking Vegas Golden Knights right now? They're 5 0. 6 0. They won last night. Oh my they God. 6 0. The first, the first uh, defending champions go 6 0 the following season. Yeah, that's that's scary. They're scary. Yeah. Jack Eichel looks great. <laughs> Jack Eichel like, looks very much at home. Like, I'm so glad he's in Vegas. I'm so glad. And look, like, Buffalo's doing great without him. They're, they've got their own thing going. Like, I'm not shitting on them for that. But, like, the, the Eichel in Buffalo was just not working out. I'm so glad he's out of there and it's working out in Vegas. He's fucking electric. Yeah. Um... Another thing that I would like to talk about before we go off air here is I just want to shout out myself for buying into (laughs) Jack Hughes because this kid is going to push for an MVP this year. Yeah, like as the weeks go on, my hot take is getting significantly less spicy. (laughs) Like Like it's a pretty mild take at this point. Like these guys are for real and this kid Jack Hughes is... He might be him. Like, he might be him. I, I, I'm I pretty confident that he is him. He is so good. And he is he knows that he is so good. His confidence level is just on a completely different stratosphere, man. He, yeah, he like, sees the ice right now like Wayne Gretzky. Uh, so Gretzky was literally saying that he sees himself in Jack Hughes. Which is nuts. That's insane. Like, like I just, I, I don't, I don't remember Gretzky ever saying that about anyone. No, because nobody's ever. They, they, one of my favorite quotes about Gretzky and what everybody always says is the fact that he wasn't the best in the world at everything. He didn't have or at anything. He didn't have the hardest shot. He didn't skate the fastest. He didn't have the best hands. But he was the best at everything, meaning in ever, everything combined. And his greatest yeah. asset was the ability to just see the ice differently than everybody else. He knew where to be. 20 steps b- b- before anybody else did was kind of what made him great. Yeah, and he'd set up in his, in his office behind the net and he'd just fucking see what was happening and then just fucking exactly. feed yeah. Curry or Messi or whoever the fuck. It's Messi like you saw it from like a bird's eye view kind of, kind of situation. Yeah. 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 
And like, yeah, you see that in cues. And yeah, like I said, my my hot take for preseason is a very mild take right now. It's going to be an ice cold take by game 82. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, definitely. It's they are a wagon. The the New Jersey Devils are a wagon. They just got to figure out their whole goaltending situation. Once they do that, they'll be unstoppable. Luke Hughes looks great too. The other Hughes brother. Yeah. Uh, his first. I two- mean, also, like Quinn's looking good out in Vancouver, but let's keep it in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just uh, that his first Luke Hughes' first two NHL goals are assisted by his brother. I think that's hilarious. Yeah. And yeah, that uh, the the Hughes wagon in New Jersey just keeps on chugging, man. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're just rolling. Like it's it's incredible to watch. Yeah. Anyway, what uh, we got? Um, anything you want to get to before we talk about uh, former Leaf Travis Dermott here? Uh, no, I think that's just about everything. The Habs uh, actually play tomorrow in Buffalo, seven p.m. We have the Tuesday game against. Uh, oh, it's against the Devils. We're going to get absolutely fucking thumbed. Yeah. Um, that's not going to be fun. Uh, but then the Jackets are in town on Thursday, and the Jets are in town on Saturday for uh, four games this week, which is uh, a nice change-up from the last two. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I Yeah, this is a, another three-game week for the Leafs. This is starting to get annoying. I want to see these Leafs every second night, man. This is, <laughs> this is too much. Uh, Leafs Capitals on Tuesday, as I mentioned, 6 p.m. Uh, then we are in Dallas. We're going on a central Central United States road trip here in Dallas, 8 p.m. Then in Nashville, Saturday night, 7 p.m. Uh, another thing that I learned that I'm very much looking forward to, and I'm hoping I have that Friday off, is the Leafs will be going on a trip to Sweden in November. I don't have the exact dates in front of me, but they will be playing a 2 p.m. Friday game. This uh, this new this information comes from the Steve Dangle Twitter page. Uh, they will be playing a 2 p.m. Friday game and an 8 a.m. Sunday morning game while they are in Sweden. So Ooh. that's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm going to be mean, up obviously for that Sunday. Yeah, I was going to say that might be a uh, maybe record like directly post game for that one. Might be what's happening. Yeah, that's probably is going to be what happened. Uh, happens uh, there but do we know you, who they play no i don't i just know the times and the dates interesting or not the dates not the date. I, I just said i don't know the dates i just know the times and the days <laughs> you, you just know that they will be in sweden at some point next month playing on a friday and a sunday yes that is <laughs> exactly what i have the knowledge of yes <laughs> all right um so i'll try uh give a shout out travis Dermot here yeah, so Travis Dermott, shout out uh, for defying a stupid rule. Uh, I think we can agree. I don't know if we've talked. Have we talked about this yet on the podcast? Uh, we haven't, no. I think the last thing that we talked about was, I think maybe near the end of the year, we talked about how they were doing no more special jersey nights which and how stupid that was for all those great causes. But uh, yeah. we haven't, got, haven't gotten into it this year, no. So the NHL banned pride tape, which was something players used to show solidarity uh, with uh, the pride community. And I don't think anybody really had an issue with that, like the the whole tape thing. Maybe there were certain players. The the biggest issue last year was there were players that had um, issues wearing the jerseys because of religious purposes, which we don't need to get into why that's a load of bullshit. But um, it is. And but whatever. Sure. So they ban. That's what we've talked about last was was the banning of all pregame jerseys for causes, which is ridiculous because there's yeah. there's more than just pride jerseys. We had military hockey nights, fights cancer, hockey fights cancer. We, like you own a hockey fights cancer, it's right there. I can see it, right? Yep. So like, you like them, baby. It's, it's just ridiculous that that's that's the direction that they went with that, and then they took it another step, which nobody was asking for. And now they've banned pride tape, which is something could player players could choose. It's not something that was mandated. It's something that players chose to wear on their to, to tape their sticks with or or whatever. They could tape their their shin pads with it. Like I know I've used stick tape to tape my shin pads in the past sometimes. Oh, yeah. They can do whatever they want, but no, now that's banned as well. And uh Travis Dermott, former Leaf, and now playing for the Arizona Coyotes yesterday in an afternoon game against the Anaheim Ducks. Wore pride tape on his stick right under where where his top hand is, right under the, the handle of the stick, if you will. And uh, 
yeah, good for him. And and now the NHL is looking into punishing him for it, and I dare them to try, honestly. Well, I mean, technically it's not against the rules. Uh, the rules say that they can use whatever color tape they like. Um, but the NHL uh, is trying to distance itself from taking sides in, um, you know, I would get, I would say maybe like political and, you know, public discourse, which is stupid because, you know, like this is a public game and, you know, if a guy wants to wear pride tape to show that support, then like, why the fuck not? If he's um, making the decision, like it's his decision. Like you're not, that's, that's yeah. the thing. It's not a mandated thing. Anyway, sorry for interrupting you. No, 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 no. I would say, and like what, there would be no difference if he decided to tape, like use fucking like lime green tape on his sticks. Like what's the fucking difference? Like, so what he wants yeah. to do, like, but yeah, so the, uh, yeah, the league is, has, as of uh, recording, hasn't uh, put out anything, uh, potentially, like, not punishing him or even, like, you know. Fines or whatever. Yeah, like, there's been, there's been no discussion of it yet, but uh, I would assume the league is going to do something because they're awful people. You know, yeah. I, I think you said it, I think you said it best last season, you know, hockey's for everyone, the NHL isn't. Yeah, you know, that's. They've shown that more than once. And, and this, like, that's the the thing about this one for me is, like, nobody asked for this. Like, nobody, you know what I mean? Like, nobody asked yeah. for you to ban Pride Tape. And, and, and players are upset because you're basically telling them that their ability to support causes, given their platform that they've built for themselves by becoming National Hockey League players and becoming famous athletes, they don't get to use that to support they call it the causes that they want to use that to support. And that's absurd to me. That's absurd. Right. Like, yeah. I don't know. It, yeah. The Jersey thing was one thing because there were a select few idiots in the league that didn't want to support the cause and made a big stink out of it for everybody. And I could get it like saying, OK, then we're just not going to do anything then. But this one makes zero sense to me, just solely due to the fact that it's a player driven initiative it's not a league-wide thing it's not a team-wide thing it's just players choosing to support a cause on the platform that they've built for them so i don't know it's it's ridiculous but yeah yeah it, it is really stupid no. and again shout out travis dermott for having the balls to do that absolutely um, ho hopefully he's not the last player we see do that uh, well, i really hope not the company the company that makes pride tape has already said they have they've gotten numerous orders from national hockey league players so hopefully we see a ton yeah. of that this year okay. so yeah, that's that. I don't think we need to say why that's ridiculous, even though we just kind of no. did. Like, I mean, I think we've said it a million times on this show. Like, you know, just it's just a, like a thing of basic human decency. <laughs> like that's that's basically what it comes down to. Yeah, it's and like not. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't want to. I don't want to fucking do the whole fucking spiel again because it gets me pissed off. Because it's so stupid that the NHL is like this. Yeah. Anyway, so that's all we have this week, uh, I believe, unless there's anything else that you need to get off of your chest, Gatano. No, I think that is everything. Okay, well, we would like to thank you for listening to episode 106 of the Bitter Rivals podcast, powered by 91N. Uh, we are off until next Sunday. Um, so we are looking forward to the games this week. We're looking forward to this major hockey event that is taking place on Tuesday night and it might be a lot of fun I hope that I am able to find somewhere to watch this multi-feed because I know I enjoy Red Zone I'm actually currently enjoying Red Zone right now <laughs> uh so uh yeah let's let's hope that that's a that's a success because I know sometimes new things aren't in the National Hockey League at, and that's putting it lightly um <laughs> board ads but um Anyway, thank you again for listening to episode 106. We will talk to you next Sunday. Uh, until then, have a great week and go, Leafs, go. Go, Abs, go.